Like so many things, buying BTC is easier said than done. Easier said than done. And if you do it wrong, it could cost you a lot of money and time. If you do it right, however, you can get your hands on the world's best performing asset in the optimal way. Now, since its launch in 2009, BTC has gone up by more than 760,000x. Assuming BTC's historical trend continues, you will eventually find that you've saved yourself a lot of money and time by buying BTC correctly. That's why today we're going to give you a brief explanation of what Bitcoin is, outline a step-by-step -step guide on how to buy BTC, and let you in on a few tips that will maximize your returns. I'll start by saying that this video is not financial advice. It's purely educational content that's meant to help you understand what BTC is and how to buy it. Make sure to consult your financial advisor to see if BTC is right for you, ideally one that actually understands what BTC is, of course. That said, it's important to note that Bitcoin and BTC are actually two different things. Bitcoin is basically a distributed database that's secured by a series of computers called miners, which execute some hefty computational processes in order to earn the right to effectively update the information in the distributed database. The reason why miners must expend all this computational power is to ensure that they have skin in the game. In other words, it's to ensure that they will update this database correctly. Now, this database is divided into chunks of data called blocks. Each block includes a reference to the previous block, hence the term blockchain. BTC is the native cryptocurrency coin of the Bitcoin blockchain, and it provides the financial incentive for miners to secure the blockchain. The data contained within each block on the Bitcoin blockchain is made up of BTC transactions. When a miner adds a block of transactions to the blockchain, they earn BTC as a reward. So, this begs the question of what gives BTC value? The answer is threefold. The first is that the Bitcoin blockchain it exists on is believed to be the most secure network in the world. This makes BTC the most secure digital asset in existence, one that has stood the test of time so far. The second reason why BTC has value is because of its supply and demand dynamics. Every four years, the amount of BTC that miners earn from each block is cut in half. This restriction in new supply, combined with the same or more demand, eventually results in BTC's price doubling, often more due to speculation. Now, the third reason why BTC has value is the most important, and that's because it allows for financial freedom. You can hold BTC in your own wallet and decide exactly what you do with it and when. This is the true definition of financial freedom and it's something that's being increasingly restricted. Consider that the money you have in the bank technically doesn't belong to you. Seriously, look it up. And if you're enjoying the video so far, by the way, be sure to smash that like button to help others find it and make sure to subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell so you don't miss the next one. Now, with the basics of Bitcoin under your belt, the next step is to identify the best way to buy BTC. As a rule of thumb, there are two ways in which you can buy BTC, directly using cryptocurrency exchanges and platforms, or indirectly using traditional exchanges and platforms, which offer Bitcoin ETFs and the like. Buying BTC directly is preferable because it allows you to hold your own BTC. The caveat is that there are some cases where this is not ideal. This could be because you're not sure how to self-custody your BTC, because you have a lot of BTC that you're scared to lose, or because of regulations. If this is the case for you, then you're probably better off buying BTC indirectly using traditional exchanges and platforms. Depending on where you live, chances are that your bank or broker will offer spot Bitcoin ETFs or similar instruments that allow you to profit from BTC without having to hold it. The catch is that all these assets are custodial, meaning that you technically don't own them. 
Not only that, but exchange-traded products that track BTC's price can deviate from that price. That's because BTC trades 24-7, whereas these products only trade during stock market hours, Monday to Friday. That's why it's preferable to buy BTC directly wherever possible. So this begs the question of which crypto exchange or platform is the best to buy BTC. Well, in our opinion, the answer is currently Swissborg. As the name suggests, Swissborg is a crypto platform headquartered in Switzerland that's available in 44 countries. Now, in contrast to most crypto platforms, Swissborg has a reputation for being very transparent and compliant with the regulations in all of the jurisdictions it operates in. More importantly, the crypto platform segregates customer and corporate assets, which allows for safe third-party custody. Now, as you might have guessed, we happen to have an exclusive deal with Swissborg. If you sign up using the link down below and deposit 50 euros worth of crypto or fiat, then you'll get up to 100 euros worth of crypto for free, assuming you live in a country that supports this deal. 39 of the 44 do. If you happen to be in a jurisdiction that Swissborg doesn't currently support, then be sure to check out the Coin Bureau deals page for other crypto platforms that could suit you. If you are in a jurisdiction that Swissborg supports but aren't sure how to sign up or buy BTC using Swissborg, don't fret. That's exactly what we're going to show you now. The first step to buying BTC with Swissborg is to download the app, obviously. To do this, use the link in the description of this video. It should take you to a website that looks like this. Scroll down and scan the QR code using your phone camera and click the link that shows up. If you're watching this video on a computer and have your phone handy, you can scan the QR code here. Now, this should bring up the Swissborg app in the Google Play or Apple App Store. Click Install. FYI, the Swissborg app is just 25 megabytes for anyone who's short on phone storage. Once installed, click Open. After a few seconds, you should see a screen with the Swissborg logo that says Get Started. Click on that button. Next, Swissborg will ask for your phone number. Enter your phone number and click Next. What's awesome is that Swissborg will give you the option to send the confirmation code via WhatsApp or SMS, depending on your preference. Once you've received and entered the code, you'll be asked to create a secure four-digit passcode. Think of one that you won't forget, but also one that you haven't used elsewhere already. Once you've entered the passcode, you'll be asked to confirm it by re-entering it. At this stage, Swissborg will ask you for a load of personal details to create your account. This is because of strict KYC regulations, which some would say make no sense, but that's a topic for another time. Click on the button where it says, I agree with the terms of use, and then click Next. After that, enter your name and your date of birth and your nationality, and click Next. Then add your email address and click Next. Now, on that next slide, you'll be asked to verify your email address. By this point, you should have received an email with a link that you'll need to click on. If you haven't received it, chances are it's ended up in your spam folder. Now, once you've found the email, click the link. This should take you back to the app. And once you are back in the app, you should see that your personal details and email address have been completed. So the next step is to confirm your residential address. Click Next. Here, you'll be asked to search for your address. If it shows up, Swissborg should automatically add the address information, postal code, etc. If it doesn't show up, then you'll have to enter your address information manually by clicking Enter Manually. Once all looks good, click Next. Finally, you'll be asked to complete an investment questionnaire. Answer all of the questions honestly and then click Confirm. Once done, you should get a message saying your account registration is complete. Click Close. This will bring you to the Swissborg homepage. Click on Deposit. This should result in a prompt asking you to complete KYC. So click Verify Account. 
This will bring you to the Identity Verification page. Make sure you have one of the required documents handy. A passport or national ID card are ideal. Confirm that you're not a politically exposed person, unless you are, and click Get Started. At this stage, as with all crypto platforms, you'll now have to take a photo of your identity document and then record a video of your face to prove that it's really you creating the account. So, start by clicking I consent to the processing of my biometric data and then click Choose document. Next, select the country that your document was issued from. Take a note of the accepted documents. Some countries may not allow certain documents for KYC, hence why it's good to stick to a passport or national ID. Then take a photo of your ID document. Pro tip, if you use a passport, you only have to take one photo. Saves time compared to the two photos you need to take for most other IDs. And finally, take a scan of your face and upload the video. This should bring you back to a page that tells you your documents are under review and that you'll be notified as soon as they've been checked. Click Continue. By the time you click Continue, chances are that your ID will be verified. You'll be able to tell because you'll get a pop-up saying you're ready to go. If you're not sure, then click the profile icon on the bottom right of the screen. In the Profile tab, click on Account Level. This page will show you your verification status, with level one being the minimum you need to start buying and selling BTC in most countries. As you can see, level two is ideal as it gives you much larger deposit and withdrawal limits. Same goes for level three. Now, once you've finished setting up your SwissBorg account, you're ready to buy BTC. First, click the Deposit button on the homepage. Then select your preferred deposit method. For the purposes of this video, we'll be using card. Enter your card information and then click Add Card. After that, enter the amount of money you want to deposit. For now, SwissBorg only allows you to deposit Swiss francs, euros, or British pounds via card. Other currencies can be added via bank transfer. I'll also note that SwissBorg has a withdrawal cooldown period, meaning that you can't withdraw the funds you deposited for between 10 and 30 days. Thankfully, SwissBorg segregates its customer and corporate assets, so your BTC will be safe in the interim. Click I understand and then confirm. You should then get a page saying that your deposit was successful. If you want, give your card a name and then click Finish. This will bring you back to the SwissBorg homepage. At this point, you should get a notification saying that you've received a reward ticket for using our affiliate link. Click on it. Now, like real tickets, you'll have to scratch to see how much crypto you've won. As I mentioned earlier, you can win as much as 100 euros worth. If you didn't get a notification about the reward ticket, then check the Referrals tab on the profile page of the SwissBorg app. If you still don't see your reward, then you either didn't use our link to download the app, didn't do enough KYC, or didn't deposit an amount of money equivalent to 50 euros or more. We'll leave a link to SwissBorg's help page in the description if you're having any problems. But back to the mission at hand, buying BTC. So from the SwissBorg homepage, click on the Invest tab at the bottom. Next, click on Buy Cryptos. BTC should be the second result on this page. Click on it. Then click the Buy button at the bottom. Select the currency you deposited from the options. Then click All, assuming you want to invest the whole amount into BTC, of course, and click Next. Finally, you'll get a page asking you to confirm the purchase. Click Confirm. After a cool animation, you'll get a message saying your exchange was successful. It should look like this. Then click Finish. This should bring you to the BTC account in your SwissBorg portfolio. Once the cooldown period has passed, you'll want to withdraw your BTC to your own personal wallet. So, to do this, click on the Send button in the bottom right. On the next page, select External Wallet. Then select the amount you want to send and click Next. At this point, you need to enter the wallet address of your personal Bitcoin wallet 
and click Next to confirm and complete the withdrawal. If you don't have a Bitcoin wallet or don't know how to set one up, we'll leave a link to our Trezor wallet tutorial in the description. We'll also leave a link to our in-depth SwissBorg review in the description too, so that you can take advantage of all the other features this crypto platform has to offer. Now, to wrap things up, I want to give you a few tips that you can use to maximize your BTC returns. The first tip is to accumulate BTC using crypto platforms that won't shaft you with fees, such as SwissBorg. Note that this doesn't just include deposit fees, but also swap fees and withdrawal fees for BTC. The second tip is to realize that buying and holding BTC is just as profitable as trading it in the long term. So, unless you're ready to dedicate every day to trading BTC, you're statistically better off buying and holding. Don't get distracted by those claiming that they doubled their BTC stack overnight by trading. The third tip is to understand that the returns in altcoins are likely to be larger in percentage terms. At times, this may tempt you into rotating your BTC into altcoins. As with day trading though, unless you're ready to dedicate every single day to researching altcoins, you're statistically better off buying and holding BTC. The fourth tip is to accept that BTC's price can be very volatile. It regularly goes up and down by double digits, sometimes in a single day. If you find yourself constantly checking your BTC holdings, then chances are that you've bitten off more than you can chew and should consider reducing your allocation. The fifth tip is to consider using BTC as a tool once your holdings become large enough. For example, suppose you want to buy a car for 40 grand and you're sitting on 400 grand's worth of BTC. Instead of selling 40k worth of BTC, you can borrow against some of your BTC holdings. Just be aware of the liquidation risks. The added bonus of this approach is that you can, in many cases, avoid paying capital gains tax by borrowing against your BTC. Just make sure to check this with your accountant, as this isn't the case in every country. And this ties into the sixth tip, and that's to be aware that a lot of BTC's price appreciation is not due to BTC's value going up, but the value of fiat currencies going down. As a matter of fact, if you adjust the prices of most assets to account for inflation, you'll notice most haven't gone up in real terms. BTC is one of the few exceptions, but the trade-off is the volatility I just mentioned. And that relates to the seventh tip, and that's to remember that BTC is one of many assets you should keep in your portfolio. Being all in BTC isn't for everyone, particularly for those who are new to crypto. As you become more comfortable with the asset class and its volatility, you can increase your BTC exposure. This pertains to the eighth tip, and that's to ignore what you're hearing about Bitcoin, regardless of whether it's positive or negative. Obsessing over what others are saying will result in FOMO and FUD that messes up your BTC allocation. Just do your research, ignore the noise, accumulate, and hodl. Now, the ninth tip follows from the eighth, and that's to set realistic expectations for how big your BTC stack could grow. There are lots of price predictions out there, and very few are realistic. Our research suggests that BTC will likely hit between 120 and 180K sometime in 2025, likely in the summer or the autumn. But hey, we might be wrong, of course. Now, our final tip is a combination of all of the above, and that's to keep it simple and not overthink everything. BTC has been around for over 15 years. It is the best performing asset of all time. It is likely to continue going up in value, if only because the value of fiat currencies is being eroded. So, unless you truly care about crypto from a philosophical or technical perspective, there's no point in wasting time and energy poking away at every potential problem BTC has or the solutions it could offer. Just consider BTC to be digital gold, an asset which, with a bit of luck, will save you lots of time and money. And on that note, if you're wondering how BTC compares to actual gold, check out the link in the description.
And that's all for today's video, folks. So if you found it helpful, help us out by smashing that like button. If you want to keep getting helpful content, subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell. If you want to help others buy BTC, then take a second to share this video with them. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. This is Guy, signing off. Thank you.